Welcome back to video number four, wicka wicka wow, in the 10 part series of how to become a marine biologist, or at least how to get started, I guess, is really what it's more about, or how to prepare for a, a, a career in marine biology. Number four is all about mentorship. I recommend you find a mentor. All right, so actually go out and find somebody who has a job or an interesting position that you are interested in and ask them to be your mentor. It can be somebody that you don't know, somebody who you found online, somebody who you have uh, read their book or somebody who you uh, you follow on social, uh, or it can be somebody that you know, somebody who goes, who is a you know professor or scientist in your area and somebody who you aspire to be or be like or are just curious about their job. Finding a mentor is a really big deal and it can really help your career, it can really open doors for you, it can really open your eyes to a lot of different things. You need to be a good fit for one another and that can't really be forced and that takes a little bit of time to make sure that you're the right fit. And so what I would first encourage you to do is ask for an informational interview. This informational interview is something you can request. It's so I'd say that it's like half an hour long. It can be virtual if you want. So it can be a Skype interview or it can be simply a phone call or it can be in person if you can, if you're close by. And ultimately you're just there to ask questions about what, how they got to their career. What do they recommend for you? Um, you know, what are their biggest tips and, and strategies for how they, uh, maneuvered their career and how they picked uh, what they are doing now. Even questions about how did they get into school? What kind of courses did they take? What extracurricular things did they do? Where did they volunteer? How did uh, how did they get their foot in the door? If, if they even like their job, you can ask like, do you like your job? What's the best part of your job? What's the thing that you don't like the most about your job? These kind of informational interviews can really be helpful to kind of pick out which career matches your perception of that career. So you could be thinking it's one thing and then somebody who's actually doing it can tell you it's a much different thing or that maybe it is, maybe you're right. And in that case, you definitely do wanna go ahead with it. Ask for a couple informational interviews and once you find the person that you seem to gel with the most, that you seem to get along with and you seem to have a connection with or that their career seems to be the most like the one that you aspire to have, I would ask them to be your mentor. For me personally, I've had incredible mentors throughout my life. One in particular who's been there for the longest, his name is Philip Brooker. He's the founder of the Yakulit Aquarium and he is, he mentored me as I was going through the process of starting the aquarium in Newfoundland. We call the Petty Harbor Mini Aquarium and it was pretty much a replica of the one that he built in Yakulit on the other coast of Canada. So I took his model, learned so much from it while I was volunteering and working there and then we started to determine, you know, maybe this is something that we can repeat. And because I went to University of Newfoundland, I thought maybe I can bring it over there and we can start something very similar. How Phil and I managed our relationship is that I actually physically asked him, will you be my mentor? And I said, if you're my mentor, this is kind of what I had in mind. We would meet monthly. I would either meet you in person or be over the phone. I will have an agenda for those meetings and they will incorporate things that I want to learn about or questions that I have or things that I'm challenged with and we'll discuss them together. And there was going to be no preparation for him to attend. He didn't have to do anything before or after. I didn't want to have any barriers for him to, to say yes to this. And so I felt it was really important to keep it simple. But at the same time, I also asked for a commitment from him. You know, we both are going to commit to this. Uh, you know, I, I didn't put a time frame on it, but I ultimately said, like, would this be, would this work for you? And we also had something that we were working on together. Like he was my mentor to help me start this aquarium. Uh, and for you, frame it up. Can you help me in the next six months as I'm looking for a new career path or as I'm, as I'm transitioning from high school to university? or as I am um, starting this new position that I'm really excited about, but I'm a little nervous because it's kind of, you know, it's new for me. Mentorship relationships can be really helpful when you have a purpose to them. And it can be easier for you to say, this isn't a long-term relationship necessarily. It's something that I'm helping you with in this it, during this period of time. In my case for Phil and I, uh, he continued to be my mentor for over 10 years uh, through the process of starting the aquarium and then keeping it running. And then as we started a company together, uh, our relationship changed from being mentor-mentee to being colleagues and, and co-founders of Ocean to Eye Level, our consulting company. And so for that reason, I think it was a, a really good fit. And again, I think our relationship evolved as we went. If you want something that's formal, I would ask, I would encourage you to ask. If you want something that's less formal and something that's just like, you know, you take that informational interview and that's all you kind of need, or you take an informational interview, but you kind of want like, you know, a couple more meetings or a couple more checkpoints, then that's all up to you. The mentor isn't really intended to do the work here. It's up to you to source them out, ask for the meeting, and then follow up, follow up, follow up. And that follow-up can not just only be, thanks so much for the meeting, I really appreciated your input, here's some of the key takeaways that I had from our conversation. 
It can also be, hey, I just got a job or I just applied for this really exciting opportunity or internship or I just volunteered at this really great organization and I wanted to let you know about it. Those kind of checkpoints allow you to show the mentor that what they provided you in that conversation meant something to you and you're doing something with their their suggestions, with their advice, with their with their time and just continually check in with them. Maybe set a Google calendar reminder for yourself that like every six months you'll just give them a quick little update to say, hey, here's what's going on with me in my life and here's some of the questions or decision points that I'm at right now and here's how, you know, do you have any suggestions, do you have any advice at this point? Seek mentorship, whether it be formal or informal. And I would also encourage you to say yes to informational interviews that you might get asked for in the future. We all have something to give and something to teach. And if we're all willing to say yes, then you more likely will get a yes from someone if you ask them to be your mentor. So no time like the present to start teaching and no time like the present to start asking. Well, I hope this has been helpful. So here's my question for you. Please let me know, do you already have a mentor? Is it formal? Is it informal? Or what are you seeking in a mentor if you don't already have one? And what are you going to do to try and find one? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear how you're finding these videos and if they've been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next video number five. See you soon. Mentorship. Mentorship. Okay, bye.